I believe in miracles because I believe in God. This is the message this ministry is taking to the world through signs, wonders, miracles, and healings. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. And greetings in the name of the Lord. So glad you can join me on the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm Reverend Chris Mockamer. I'll be the host for today's program. Friend, we have much in store for you. Good music and singing. Also, Reverend Steve Millar and his wife Kathy will be on set with another wonderful Growing in Grace mission segment. And also a powerful sermon by Reverend Steve on divine faith. Friend, get ready to be blessed. We have one purpose in this short life, one reason to live and not to die, to tell the world about Jesus. We must win souls. But when my work on earth is done, when God calls to take me home, I'm going to heaven to live forevermore. I'm going to heaven someday. I'm going to leave this house of clay. I'm going to leave this world behind. Heaven's glory will be mine. I'll see Jesus face to face forever in his loving grace. I will never be alone, I'm going home. Some of our loved ones have moved on to our home beyond the sun. They stood tall, tall till the work was done, then God called them home. A brother or sister, mom or dad, Husband or wife or dearest friend They'll all be waiting on heaven's shore When we go home Yes, I'm going to heaven someday I'm going to leave this house of clay I'm going to leave this world behind Heaven's glory will be mine I'll see Jesus face to face forever In His loving grace I will never be I'm going home I'm going to heaven someday I'm going to leave this house of clay I'm going to leave this world behind Heaven's glory will be mine I'll see Jesus face to face forever In His loving grace I will never be alone Forever in His loving grace I will never be alone I'm going home I'm going to heaven someday Someday Reverend Steve Millar, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy, and we're celebrating our Growing in Grace mission program. And friend, maybe you've seen this minister before. He's been with us in Rwanda at the crusade services. He's been Reverend Angeli's interpreter. Well, his name is Pastor Emmanuel from Rwanda, East Africa. 
Yes, and he's our featured pastor for this segment, and he's such a blessing. And what's unique about this particular pastor is that we personally know him and we work with him on the mission fields. So his story goes back to 1995 when he was living in Uganda. Now he's a refugee. His parents had to flee from Rwanda back in 1959. And he became a refugee in Uganda. And Reverend had a crusade there in Uganda and he attended that crusade when he was younger. And the blessing is, is that he received a t-shirt from one of, our, one of our members of Grace Cathedral. And on the front of that t-shirt, it said, you are special to God. And that really marked his life from that point on. So that was a great blessing. And it makes me realize that God looks out for all kinds of people and he marks them at different points in their lives. And in this case, he marked him in 1995. And, and I'll tell you, you know, Emmanuel, he has been a great blessing. And like we said or just a little bit ago, he was Reverend Angeli's interpreter right. for the Rwanda Crusades. <laughs> and Reverend said, he, you know, he had that sweet spirit and it right. just drew him. And for, you know, Reverend Angeli, you've, you've seen him on stage where he's just preaching up a storm and that, that interpreter has to follow and say everything, you know, in that, in the Rwanda language. Yes. And actually that took place 13 years later. So what happened was a friend of his let him know that there was an evangelist from America coming to Rwanda. He was living in Rwanda at that time that was going to bring a miracle crusade there to Rwanda and he wanted to know who that pastor was. And when his friend told him it was Reverend Ernest Angeli, he got so <laughs> excited because he remembered being touched in a special way in that 1995 crusade in Uganda. And he felt so much love from our ministry. He that felt it, that connection. Yes, and absolutely. It, and you know, the presence of the Lord and he realized that, you know, that in that Rwanda, in, in actually the Uganda crusade, he felt that love of the Lord. And then when Reverend Angie was coming back 13 years later, you know, he was all excited. Oh yeah, in fact, he says, I was very, very happy. And he asked his friend, is that true? I was overwhelmed by joy. <laughs> so he was completely overwhelmed and no doubt could not wait until we arrived. And he didn't know that he was going to be the interpreter at that point. You Correct. Know, until he, you know, he shows up there and, you know, and Reverend realizes that, you know, he was the one that needed to be doing the interpretation. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, God really started moving through his life after that. And, you know, his experience in serving the Lord turned blessings over mm -hmm. into his life in education. He went and he went forth and was blessed with finances to get a good education. And then he stayed in touch with the ministry throughout the years. And then the Lord called him to become a pastor. So now he is preaching the word of God in Rwanda. And he has over 25 pastors that he's working with in this Growing in Grace program to help get the literature in their hands so they can distribute it to their churches. And he actually has a video where he is giving, he gives the literature to some of his members at his church. And they're able to tell us what the Bible actually means to them and that literature means to them. So if you would like to donate to this mission program, what a huge blessing. And you're gonna heal, hear how people respond, you know, when they are able to receive a Bible, which is the roadmap to heaven. Yes. So go ahead and let's just go ahead and watch this video now. Hello everyone there. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. My name is Eva right from Kigali, Rwanda, Grace Cathedral Church. I want to thank you so much, uh, more so the Honest Angry Ministries for the good gifts you've donated to us. I'm really so happy and grateful as you see me. Uh, in my hands, I have different, different packages. I have my Bible, the King James Version, yeah. Then I have my books, my literature books for reading. I'm really so happy. I've already received them. They are with, uh, they are with, with me. I'm going to make sure that I read my Bible so much. And I'll make sure that I read my books and they're going to make me grow spiritually. And with all this, I believe God is going to bless you. May God enlarge your territories. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. I'm Winnie from Randach Gully. 
at Ruth Cathedral Church. I would like to thank the Honesty Angry Ministries for the gifts they gave us. I have a Bible here and literature books. Thank you very much. May God bless you. I love when we get those video clips of people sharing their personal experience of receiving their own Bible and literature from this Grown in Grace program. It blesses me to know that we're touching those souls. And you know, when you receive a Bible or literature and you can just get stronger and stronger in the Lord, it's just going to help your walk with the Lord. Absolutely. And you know, he's receiving boxes and boxes of literature that he's distributing not only to his own church, but to these other pastors throughout. And there's a lot involved in travel. So if he's traveling to these different provinces, he might be traveling on a motorbike or he might have to rent a taxi. There's different modes of transportation. And some of the pastors will actually travel to him and then they'll load up their vehicle and, and travel back. And sometimes it's two or three hours, maybe even up to four hours of travel time. And we do have a video of what that entails. And actually, Pastor Emmanuel is going to be traveling to the eastern province on motorbike and then bus and then motorbike again. <laughs> so it's quite an ordeal. And he can only take so much literature when he tra travels by motorbike. So he can only load up so much of that literature with him. So it's, it's quite a sacrifice and commitment to have to do that. It is. And you'll be able to see his backpack. And he's traveling to this church, like you said, three hours away. And you know, it's just that one church and he'll be able to give all that literature out to them. Yes, it's a blessing. So let's go ahead and watch that video now. Hello viewers. I'm right here at church office where we keep the literature and Bibles we received from Honesty Andre Ministries. I'm now opening to get ready for distribution. And here we go. These are the boxes of literature and Bibles we received from Ernest Andrew Ministries to distribute to our church members. This morning I'm going to distribute the literature and Bibles to one of our churches in Eastern Province. I've packed my bag and I'm now ready to go. It's going to be three hours from Kigari to the Eastern Province. I will take a motor taxi, then a bus, and another taxi motor to reach the church where I'm going to distribute the literature. Three hours today. Thank you. Well, viewers, I'm now on the taxi motto, getting ready to go for distributing the literature and Bibles. And here I get on the motto. As the law requires, I have to put in uh, a step, then put the cast and get ready to go. And here we are, ready now to go to the Eastern Province to distribute the Bibles and future. Greetings again viewers. After leaving Kigari at 9.30, I'm now in the Eastern Province. It's now 12 p.m. where I'm heading to the church to distribute the Bibles and the literature that I received from Ernest Angel Ministries. And may God bless you all that sponsored the buying and the acquiring of this literature. God bless you. Wow, I cannot imagine traveling on the back of a motorbike for that many hours on rugged terrain, but he made the sacrifice to do that. 
to get that literature in the hands of the people. It takes great love and sacrifice, and even just one piece of literature can change someone's life. But when you have all that literature in that backpack and you want to give it out to the church, plus the Bibles. Yes, yes. So I, I also want to point out, you know, that Emmanuel doesn't just take it to each church. He has ministers that come to his church and they'll load up their car or their truck or whatever it is and there will just be, they'll, they'll fill it to the brim. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a video that we're going to show you where there, there's just boxes in this small car and he's going to take it to the, the western part of Rwanda, uh, this minister, and he's going to be able to distribute it to many churches. And that's a huge blessing and opportunity that he has. <laughs> so at this time, let's go ahead and watch this video. Hello viewers, greetings in the name of Jesus. I'm happy to report to you that uh, Growing the Grace Mission program is reaching different parts of the country of Rwanda. This vehicle you see here is going to be traveling to the western part of the country of Rwanda, taking literature to be supplied to different churches in the western part of the country. Pastor Jean Dodier, with big commitment to the program, is going to be driving over four hours from Chigari to take the literature to the western part of the country. May God bless you all that have been sponsoring this program. God bless you. Wow, <laughs> just think that pastor from the western province delivering all that literature, taking the time to drive four hours. And that car was packed. Yes. And you know, when he gets there, he has to go from each one and deliver to those different uh, preachers. Yes, can you imagine those different pastors receiving literature from that pastor? How excited they must be. It's gonna be like Christmas for them. <laughs> yes, it's, it's all free literature yes. and it's sponsored by our partners. Yes. And when you sponsor a Bible or, you know, let's say it's a, a Holy Ghost magazine, whatever it may be, you know, because you know the need is so great. And just think, when you do that, your reward's going to be a great one in heaven. Yes, it will be. Well, moving on to Eastern Rwanda, Pastor Emmanuel again made another distribution to a pastor there, and his name is Pastor Charles. And we have a video of him receiving that literature, so we're going to take a look at that now. Hello viewers, now we are in the Eastern province where we are again dis delivering literature and Bibles and here is Pastor Charles receiving them, getting ready to distribute them to the churches in the Eastern province. May God bless you sponsors of Growing in Grace Mission Program. Thank you. After Pastor Charles received that literature from Emmanuel, he went and passed it out to his church. And you know and I know that a lot of times when we go to a church over in Africa, they don't have Bibles. You know, maybe the minister has a Bible, but not the congregation. Yeah, it is. It's heartbreaking. It really is. Every child of God should have a Bible. Everyone should have a Bible, really. Yes. And it's heartbreaking to know that these, these people can't afford a Bible, and they go sometimes their whole entire life not having a Bible. So I'm sure his congregation was shocked when they were <laughs> able to, he was able to hand, hand each one of them their individual Bible, yes. they, you know, each one. <laughs> and I would imagine when they go home, then the family can share that Bible yes, also. Yes, it's precious. So, so you're touching many, many souls when, when you're able to, you know, give to this program and we're able to pass out Bibles. Yes, and they actually put together a little video thanking us for the literature that we sent to them. So we're going to take a look at that right now. It's precious. Appreciate our leaders who have us many Bibles and notebooks. May God bless you. That is so sweet. <laughs> I just love that video and how it just touches your heart. And they, you know, they put a lot of effort into that they to say do. it all at the same time. And the, you know, because you know, they received Bibles and they were blessed in a great way and they wanted to just let us know. Yes, it was precious. And you know, not too long ago, you and Reverend Chris had an interview in one of our Growing in Grace live stream sessions. And it was such a blessing. And if people want to tune into that, 
to learn more about Pastor Emmanuel, they can just simply go to our YouTube channel and view that live stream. Well, this was a great segment, and Pastor Emmanuel is such a blessing to us, but just think the sacrifice that he makes to be able to get that literature out to the people and other ministers, and then they can go farther out into the bush and be able to tell people about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friend, we'd like to give you an opportunity to give to this Growing in Grace mission program. And when you give, you are touching souls. You are saving lives. And what a special time that will be in heaven when someone can come up to you and say, thank you for sponsoring the Bible that I received. What a wonderful reward. Well, friend, I'd like to thank you for watching. And now at this time, I want you to watch this song and be blessed in a great way. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to tell, everybody ought to tell, everybody ought to tell who Jesus is. You know that He is the lily of the valley, He is the bright and morning star. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to tell. Everybody ought to tell. Everybody ought to tell who Jesus is. Oh, my sins, sins.
Since his blood came in to my heart, he gave a blessing. One drop the blood is all it takes to make you whole. And now I am bound in the blood of the Lamb to the end of the way. Calvary bound. Without a blood, there's no peace, there's no love, there is no heaven till He makes you new. And Jesus came and made a glorious way. One drop the blood is all it takes to make you new. And now I am bound. In the blood of the Lamb, to the end, all the way, Calvary bound. were blessed by that song by the Country Gospel Band. And I hope you were blessed by that Growing in Grace Mission Program segment with Kathy Millar and Reverend Steve Millar. Friend, this Growing in Grace Mission Program is one of many different ways we're continuing to take this gospel to the world. World radio, television, the website, social media, Growing in Grace Mission Program, so many different ways we're spreading the gospel. And when you give towards Growing in Grace, well, you see firsthand through testimonies, pictures, and videos, your money at work in helping to get this gospel to people. And friend, remember, each month that you sponsor this worldwide outreach ministry with your tithes and your love offerings, you will get a new book of the month. And these are sermons by Reverend Angley in book, booklet form and it's just powerful food for your spiritual well-being. And for February, when you donate and you give, you'll get two classic giant little books. And the first is The Tears of Calvary. Also, you'll get The Tears of Calvary for the Sick and Afflicted. Oh, these two books can really be a blessing to you. And when you become a partner, each month you'll receive a letter from Reverend Angley, and the theme is love and faith for the month of February. So friend, I want to encourage you to stand by with your tithes and your offerings, because when you do, God promised he would bless you. It's right there in the word of God in the book of Malachi. He would open up the windows of heaven upon your life and pour out blessings in such abundance you would not have room enough to receive it. So, friend, I want to encourage you, help us tell others around the world about Jesus. Donate through our website, ernestangely.org, or you can donate through the mail, write to Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 1790, Akron, Ohio, 44309. Those of you watching in Canada, write to Ernest Angley Ministries, P.O. Box 970, Station U, Toronto, Ontario, M8Z, 
5P9, and I know the Lord will bless you in a great way. Now, speaking of a blessing, Reverend Steve Millar has a special sermon on divine faith, taking you back to Grace Cathedral. Listen. The title of this message is Press On With Faith. My opening scripture can be found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not based on what we are able to see with our own eyes, but what we believe to be true through the Word of God. By faith, we need to trust in the promises that are written in the Bible. And we need to press on through the doubts, the fears, the lies of the devil to the promises of God. The Bible lets us know that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Our faith comes from heaven. And that faith has to be put into action in order for it to be useful. So is your faith getting greater or is your faith getting weaker? Your faith will get weaker if you have lost hope in the promises of God. When you give up hope, you won't press on with the faith. If you want your faith to get greater, you must hear the Word of God and then you must put that Word into action. When you read about miracles in the Bible, do you have faith to believe that you can receive one? Nothing is too hard for God. But remember, the devil is going to try to keep you from receiving your miracle. That is why you must press on with faith to receive. The Bible lets us know in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we know that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, which is Jesus Christ. The, in Bible days, when people pressed on with faith to receive a miracle, they received. Those that doubted received nothing. If you need a miracle, look to Jesus and press on with faith and believe in the divine blood of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of of our faith. The Bible lets us know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you believe this, then you should believe that Jesus can heal you. Jesus hasn't changed. He still has the power to heal, just like when he lived here on this earth 2,000 years ago. We just need to have the faith to believe. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. There was so much going on around Jesus at the time when she came in search for her miracle. It's hard to say how big the crowd surrounding Jesus was, but we know as many as 5,000 people at one time gathered to hear and see Jesus. When this woman heard about Jesus, she had hope that she could receive a miracle. She was in desperate need. There was no one that could help her. Her only hope was Jesus Christ, or she was going to die. She was weak in body and probably weary in mind, but she was determined to get to Jesus. Her her faith was great in Jesus, and she kept determined to receive her miracle. I'm sure she didn't feel like fighting that crowd of people that were surrounding Jesus, but she wasn't going by her feelings. She was going by faith. She pressed on with the divine faith 
to give her the strength that she needed to overcome any hindrance that may be in front of her. She didn't allow discouraging words of the physicians to rob her of her hope. No, she kept her faith in Jesus. When people give you discouraging words, quench those discouraging words with the shield of faith. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In battle, when soldiers have a shield, it protects them from the enemy. It helps them to press forward without becoming injured. We need to press forward with the shield of faith so we can reach miracle ground and have the victory. We can't let anyone hinder us from receiving the promises of God. The crowd was all around Jesus. But that wasn't going to stop this woman from getting to Jesus that was sick. For 12 long years, she suffered with her sickness. She had the hope to believe, though. She spent all her money trying to get well. She probably endured very many painful tests and procedures without getting any better at all. In fact, the Bible says she got worse. The thing is, it doesn't matter how rich you are when that money can't bring you good health. There are many, many wealthy people down through the years who have died of incurable diseases, who spent thousands and thousands of dollars on medicine without any success. You don't need money to receive a miracle or a healing from Jesus. You just need the faith to believe. And that is what this woman had, divine faith in the blood of Jesus. This woman had an incurable disease, but that was not going to stop her from believing in the divine blood of Jesus. Put yourself in her situation. You're making your way through the crowd. You're tired and ill, and you've fought the devil for 12 long years. There's an opening just a few steps away is the great physician, Jesus Christ. But this is where the devil is going to fight you the hardest, when you're closest to your victory. The devil will try to put stumbling blocks in front of you so that he can discourage you from getting your miracle or healing. Yes, there was a big crowd around Jesus, but this is where she was determined to get to Jesus. This is where many people fall short, though. They take their eyes off of Jesus, start looking to others, or maybe, maybe listening to the devil and his chatter. But this, this woman didn't do that. She kept her focus on Jesus, and she was determined. She wasn't looking at other people. No, she was pressing on with her shield of faith in front of her. It's according to your faith that is working inside of you that will determine whether or not you will receive your miracle you have to examine your own heart and make sure there is no doubt that will keep you from reaching the hem of Jesus' garment. When the woman finally reached Jesus and touches Jesus' hem of his garment, she immediately knew that she was healed. And immediately Jesus knew that virtue had gone out of him. This surprised Jesus. He stopped dead in his tracks, and we read in Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter, verses 30 through 33, 
And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee? And sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, and knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. The woman was afraid to admit what she had done. But Jesus, in all love, comforts her by calling her daughter, and tells her to go her way in peace, that her faith made her whole. Imagine how those words affected her. In her heart, Jesus considered her as family by calling her daughter. No doubt she repeated those words many times over and over again to herself and to others as she testified about her miracle. Her great faith and what she did no doubt spread to others because we read in the very next chapter in Mark's gospel, in the sixth chapter, in the 56th verse, and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. They were willing to reach out for their miracle. Are you willing to reach out for your miracle, whatever your need may be? Another time, Jesus had just finished preaching. So he suggests that he and the disciples travel in a boat to the other side of the sea. And it says in Mark's gospel, in the fourth chapter now, in the 35th verse through 40, and the same day when the eve, even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. When a ship is full of water, it sinks to the bottom of the sea. But if your vessel is filled with Jesus, it will never sink no matter how great the storms are of life. And then continuing on in verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Notice how Jesus asked them point blank why they were full of fear. And he lets them know that they were lacking in faith. Next time you are going through a trial or a tribulation and the storms of life are raging, raging all around you, look to Jesus for your deliverance. Jesus is always ready. When you call on him, he will give you that deliverance that you need. The storms of life are going to come your way and your faith will be tested. You need to keep the shield of faith before you and keep on pressing on. I love this next example of faith that is in the Bible, a Canaan woman. 
comes to Jesus seeking for a miracle for her daughter who is grievously vexed with a demonic spirit. When she saw Jesus, she began to beg Jesus for mercy for her daughter. But Jesus doesn't respond to her cry. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 22 through 24. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the natural, you might think that Jesus is being cruel to this woman, but Jesus was going to test her faith. Think about it. The disciples wanted to send her, wanted to send her away, but Jesus didn't do that, which gave her hope. Most people would have given up and went home with a mind battle, thinking that maybe Jesus didn't care. But not this woman. She held on to that hope. Even though she was not of the household of faith, she too still pressed on with faith and hope for her daughter. And in Matthew chapter 15, verses 25 through 28. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs? And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Jesus told the woman that her faith was great, and she received a miracle for her daughter. What a great lesson we all can learn from this woman. She didn't let her upbringing of being a Gentile of the Canaan land hinder her from using her faith. Jesus gave her hope by letting her to stay, even though he was going to test her. We can learn a lot from this. Hang on to hope when you're being tested. Use your shield of faith. She didn't let her pride and bitterness to fill her heart. No. She didn't turn her back on Jesus. She stayed in there with Jesus. The Lord knows how much we can take when we are being tested. She was willing to receive a crumb from the master's table. Instead of receiving the whole loaf, all it takes is a crumb. But she ended up receiving the whole loaf for her daughter. Jesus has so much to offer each one of us in this final hour. But you will miss out if your heart is not in the right condition when you're being tested. When you are faced with a trial, you have to be careful not to be offended by Jesus. He may not come to your rescue right away. He may be waiting to see how you are going to respond. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, the tri- excuse me, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that 
perisheth, through it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Look at the Apostle Paul. Many times in his walk with the Lord, things did not go his way. In fact, he was beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, imprisoned for the sake of Christ. Paul's faith was tried and tested. He did not give up. He pressed on with divine faith. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. The only way you can keep faith is by using it. You need to use your shield of faith always before you so that you can push through to miracle ground. We all must finish our course, whether it leads to rapture ground or even the grave. We must keep pressing on with faith. Souls are at stake, and we must get the harvest in before it's too late. The Lord wants to bless us with miracle strength to overcome the devil in this final hour. But we need to keep pressing on no matter what comes our way. We have to keep the shield of faith before us at all times and keep on moving forward. Sinner backslider, the Lord has given you the measure of faith to come to Calvary for forgiveness right now. Maybe the devil is battling you in your mind, making you think that there is no hope for you, that you've gone too far. Friend, I'm here to tell you that it's not too late. Press on with faith and lay your burdens at Jesus' feet, the burdens of sin, and accept Jesus Christ in your heart right now. Pray with me and say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. You have the healer. It doesn't matter what sickness or disease is in your body. God made you. He can heal you. Friend, in the Bible, in the 16th chapter of Mark's gospel, it tells us that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I am a believer. Let's pull down heaven right now. And those of you that are listening, put your hand on your listening device. And those of you that are watching, just put your hand on your screen against my hand. This is a point of contact. And let's just pull down heaven together. Lord, Heavenly Father, you know what their need is. Break their bondages and set them free. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus and let everything come to normal in your body. Amen. And friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything he does in your life. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your testimony. You can write us and contact us on social media. And what a blessing that is, an opportunity for us to tell others, to show others your testimony. Well, friend, at this time, it's time to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Maybe you just received Jesus Christ right now. Well, you're blood washed, but you need to be spirit filled. And this is your opportunity to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. 
Now, those of you that are here that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'd like to encourage you to go over to my left, your right, over to the inlet section, and they will be, we'll have workers over there to help you. But those of you that are watching right now, I'd like you to all you have to do is say glory to get ready to receive. And everybody here, I'd like you to stand up at this time. And as I call down the Holy Ghost upon you, just yield on over and let that anointing in the Holy Spirit go through your body and let him come in. Friend, all he wants is a yielded vessel. If you're a yielded vessel, he wants to come in and baptize you. He wants to take over your tongue and speak in a heavenly language. That will be the initial evidence is speaking in tongues according to Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Friend, all you'd have to do is say glory. And as you're saying these glories, one glory right after another, you know, you can just yield on over and let the Holy Spirit take those glories over and speak in a heavenly language. So at this time, I'm going to call down this great anointing upon everybody. Lord, Heavenly Father, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And just keep on praising him. Keep on praising him. Yes, this is what he wants, a yielded vessel, glorifying the King. Praise in Jesus. Fall in love with those praises. Just you and Jesus. You and Jesus. Just yielding on over, glorifying the King. Praise in Jesus. Let that power go all through your body, glorifying Jesus. Yes, praise him, praise him. One glory right after another, glorifying Jesus. Friend, I pray you were blessed by Reverend Steve Millar's sermon today on faith, and I will be agreeing with you that God answer your prayers, that he moves and he blesses you. And friend, I want to offer you the blessed cloth from Ernest Angley Ministries. And the blessed cloth has been prayed over. The anointing of God goes with that cloth to bring miracles and healings to people. This has been a work here down through the years. So many people have received salvation, their needs supplied, a bondage broken, miracles and healings. And it's all according to the Bible. Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. And when you request the blessed cloth, it will be sent to you free. So you can request it on our website, ernestangely.org, or you can write to us and request it. And again, I say it will be sent to you free. And friend, I'd like to invite you to pay us a visit at Grace Cathedral. We have three services every weekend. We keep everything safe and sanitized so you can come and worship the Lord with peace of mind. Friday night, 7 p.m., a wonderful service. Also on Sunday, two services, a 10 a.m. service followed by a service at 7 p.m. The Word of God goes forth in song and in sermon, and those needing prayer, they can receive prayer. And friend, I want to encourage you to like us on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries. And when you become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, just hit the bell, the notification bell. By doing that, each time you will be notified that new content is posted. And we are posting new content each and every week. And friend, if you've been blessed by this program today, let us know. We encourage you to tune in next week. You are special to God. This program is paid for by the Ernest Angley Outreach Partners.